Uh, ah, ah, ah. <clears throat> hi, kids. I'm, you know, a little bit hoarse here, but uh, that's okay. Um, hi. I'm going to talk to you about the elastic question mark lab. Because um, the whole point of the lab was to see how elastic the collision was. So, uh, as we always do, I'm going to start with a picture. So, this was my steel marble, and this was my glass marble. And then the steel marble rolled down and hit the glass marble, and they both bumped, and then they went off like this. Okay. Um, now, when we're drawing our momentum picture, because if we want to see if it's you know, anytime we're doing a collision, you have to do momentum. This would not be a great picture because remember, when we're doing collisions, you want to find the momentum right before the collision, like immediately before the collision, and you want to find the momentum right after the collision. So this would not be right before and right after. So let's let's draw a picture of what's happening right before and right after, okay? So right before... The steel marble is moving that way. I'm going to call that one marble A. And the glass marble is just hanging out. And then right after, the steel marble is still moving this way. They bounce off of each other, but the steel marble is more massive. Uh, so it's moving that way. And then just at a slower speed. And then the glass marble is moving like that. Okay? Um, so then you had to. Okay, so... Hey, I drew my picture, so what's my next step? That's right, we're gonna write an equation. So let's write an equation for this. Um, and then when we write our equation, uh, you would get, hey, right here, this is M1, V1. This has nothing, this would be M1, V2 plus M2, V3. Now, if you're just doing a problem, you could solve for the momentum here and then set that equal, okay? When we're doing a lab and we're trying to show, it, like prove, is, con is momentum conserved, then you would put a big question mark here, which means you would have to solve for the mass, solve for the velocity before. How do we do that? You did a bomber problem, okay, to, to solve for the velocity. And then same thing for after. How'd you do that? Well, you did two bomber problems. I know, it's amazing. You get to get review a little bit. Um, so, that's the momentum piece, but that's not going to tell us if it's elastic or inelastic. So what do we have to do if we want to show if it's elastic or inelastic? Well, in that case, we're going to need to do our kinetic energy. We're going to see like, hey, is the kinetic energy, meaning the mechanical energy, conserved? So if we do that, you would have 1 half m1 v1 squared plus 0. And again, this is going to be a question mark. 1 half m1 v2 squared plus one half m2 v3 squared. And then you would plug your stuff in and you'd have to solve, okay? Um, and you would see how close is it to being elastic. If it was perfectly elastic, well, if it's elastic, there is no like perfectly elastic, but if it's elastic, that means this energy here equals this energy here. If this energy here is less, and chances are it will be, because some energy will have gotten transferred to sound and maybe a little bit of heat, then it's probably an inelastic collision. But you should have found it's a lot more like closer to being an elastic collision because, because of that. So that's the basic part of the lab. Um, I do want to talk about the, some of the questions at the end where you had to graph stuff. So there was, there was a question where it said, hey, I would like you to graph the velocity of marble A, um, actually it says we want to do the horizontal position of marble A versus time, okay? Um, so again, I'm not going to worry so much about this part. I'm going to worry more about like right before and right after. So right before the collision, let's talk about marble A. Well, it's moving, if I call this way the forward direction, it's moving forward at a constant speed. Well, how do we show that? Oh, right, we show that with a line. It's moving forward at constant speed. The slope is constant. Well, if it's, and then this part here, if you describe the motion, it's moving forward at a slower constant speed. Hmm, oh, that means the slope would have 
to be less. Hopefully that makes sense. This slope would be my speed here for my bomber problem. Okay? Um, and this is where the collision took place. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. If the question said, hey, I want you to make a graph of the velocity, okay, of marble A versus time, well, let's talk about this. Oh, well, tell me about the velocity here. Oh, the velocity was constant. In fact, you should have gotten a number. Let's say it was, I don't know, two meters per second. Well, it's two meters per second. It's two meters per second. It's two meters per second. Well, that means it would be like this. So again, this is gonna try to line up. Okay. And then it slowed down, but it still was constant. And it's still moving the same way. So there, that would be your, that graph. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. There was a question where it asked you to find, uh, it, it said, hey, um, you know, the force on marble A and then the force on marble B. So I think you can still see. So if this was the force on marble A versus time, well, at the start, there would be no force. Now, here we're saying this time is almost instantaneous. Uh, really, like, if I was doing this, I would just get like a blip if I was going the same units there. We're going to spread our time out so we can actually see it, so it probably would look something like this. Here's where we got to be careful, okay? This force is a vector, okay? Which means I already said here I'm going to call to the right positive. So which way is marble B going to push on A? Oh, that way, which means... I need this graph to be down here, okay? Well, what does the area of this graph tell me? The area of that graph would tell me if I was to take my final momentum for A minus my initial momentum, that would be the impulse. Well, the area of this graph would equal that number, okay? Because it's gonna be impulse, okay? If I wanted to do the force on marble B, okay, and we know Newton's third law. Remember, it's not Newton's third sometimes. That means that the force that B exerts on A is the same that A exerts on B, but the other direction. So that means this would have to point this way. And lo and behold, the area of this, which is impulse on B, which means if I was to go final minus initial, that would be the change in momentum. That would be the area of this, because that's the impulse. Well, that would tell you that uh, the impulse on B is exactly the same magnitude as the impulse on A, just points in the other direction. Which means, if I was to talk about my A-B system, and I add the impulse of A to the impulse of B, I get zero, because this is conservation momentum. My system has no impulse. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, so there you go. Bye, kids.